What's going on, Minties? The Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And today, we're going to do an advanced look at the Mighty Thor epic collection, The Black Galaxy. So please stay tuned. And welcome back, Minties. Now, before I get started, I'd like to say a quick thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending me this advanced copy. Now, The Black Galaxy has been collected before in this trade paperback right here. But this is just The Black Galaxy by Tom DeFalco. It just contains issues 417 through 425, and then some of the material from 416, but that's it. This is volume 18 of the Thor saga in the Epic Collection. Actually, so let's look at that. This is volume 17. So this is a direct follow-up to this. And here's what the two spines look like. We always love seeing, or at least I do, love seeing that right there. Just the different pictures with the same tone of color the Black Galaxy, directly following Mortal Flesh. So, most of this stuff... Actually, I have a funny story about that. Okay, now what I was going to say is most of this stuff is written by Tom DeFalco and Randall and Ron Friends, and it kicks off with the Terminus Factor. This is part three. And let's see here. I believe that's all that's included in here is just the Thor annual. So, it contains... Thor 419 to 436, and then this annual right here, which is annual 15. This annual was part of a five-part crossover of Avengers West Coast, Avengers, uh, Iron Man, I believe Captain America is the one that kicked it off, and that's the Terminus factor. It's the return of Terminus, the Destroyer, and but only the Thor annual is collected in here. So I think putting all five of the annuals in one epic would have made half of this epic and that's about it so we needed to get to the thor stuff and then we get to the black galaxy saga and here, let me show you some of this stuff here this is written by tom defalco and ron friends and it's pretty much the high evolutionary creating a new race in the black galaxy it's a new immortal race so it's kind of a big deal you have uh, a lot of the avengers come into play and that's during the time of roger stern's avengers but what I'd like to always point out about this is the amazing artwork, uh, or collaboration rather, of Ron Friends and Joe Sinat, which of course gives it that Kirby-ish like style to his artwork. I mean, the man is known to have been Jack Kirby's inker for the longest time, so of course he gives it that Kirby finish. And as a kid, I didn't appreciate it, just like I didn't appreciate Jack Kirby's artwork. I was a foolish kid. But the funny thing about this is, this takes place, actually it says here in the back, 1990 to 1991. There's your volume, retail price is $39.99, I forgot to mention that. It's epic, it tells you the numbers of issues it collects, and of course the years. And a quick synopsis of what the story is about. 1990 to 1991. Now, some of my family members, my uncle in particular, uh, knew that I liked reading comic books. And just like most adults, they really don't take time to listen to kids. So he got me a subscription. Now, I was only reading X-Men at the time. This is 7th uh, grade Omar. I was reading, uh, on my pull list, I had X-Factor, X-Men, uh, I'm sorry, Uncanny X-Men, of course. And then, of course, uh, New Mutants and Excalibur was sent to my house. So, it was speaking of Excalibur... We have the guest stars of Excalibur in issue 427. I love that homage to X-Men number one. Well, what I was going to say is uh, my uncle was nice enough to actually uh, get me a subscription to comic books. So he got me Thor and Iron Man. And I was like, I don't read this stuff, but I wasn't going to be a rude kid. So, you know, that was, uh, that was I want to say 1989, like the Christmas in the 89. So I got, a lot of these issues really remind me of that time. You know, so I tried it and I got excited. I saw that uh, Juggernaut shows up and he had that previous fight with him in issue 411, which was the first appearance of the New Warriors. Hell yes. Come on, New Warriors. Omnibus Volume 2. One day, right? One day. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, and then you had Excalibur. So I was like, okay, Thor's not kind of... He, he's kind of weird, but okay, what was confusing to me as a kid, like, reading this stuff was, during this time, Thor wasn't your typical Thor. His host was uh, Eric Masterson, and, you know, and then Thor was his own being. He turned into Thor. Well, that's about to change, and that's not much of a spoiler because of the cover. You know, that's Thor with a beard. 
I'm not going to say how or why, but Thor is about to exit. And let's see, I believe it's in this issue. No, it's in the Loki issue. Yeah, this issue right here. This classic issue right here is where things change. Well, like I said, I'm not going to spoil anything, but by the end of this issue, Eric Masterson is both body and soul of the new Thor. So we have Thor with a beard, and within the next issue, he changes his costume dramatically. Not really at all. Really, it's just that he gets this shiny new little helmet, and that's about it for a while. And then he does eventually change his own costume. Uh, but yeah, that's everything that happens with Eric happens within these pages, and this is where it all kind of began. That's what begins the Eric Masterson as Thor saga. You also have uh, not only guest stars of um, the Avengers and Excalibur, but you also have Hercules and then, yeah, villains like the Annihilus. The Wrecking Crew shows up. God, if that doesn't say 90s to you, I don't know what does. But uh, that's all I will say about that. Let's look at the back here. And here is some pinups. Of course, you could probably tell that that's one inked by Joe Sinat, the way he draws Loki, the ugly classic Kirby Loki. And just some goof ads. And then the previous collections that they've had where they've recolored the original artwork. And I think I've shown that already. It's the Black Galaxy saga. And then pages, uncolored pages. You all know how I feel about the epic collections. To me, they are wonderful and a nice, what I like to call, placeholder for maybe a one-day omnibus. Because I feel like Tom DeFalco's run on Thor and on Fantastic Four doesn't get a lot of recognition. Like, I don't hear anybody really talk about how great this run was. Now, that could be because it was I was in the seventh grade, it was the 90s, it was my first taste of Thor, that I really enjoyed his run. And New Warriors. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I've also enjoyed his Fantastic Four run. Um, all right, that is it. The book is scheduled to come out on August 28th at comic book stores and retail places online like CheapGraphicNovels.com or in stock trades. However, it's about a week or two later that they show up at places like Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And that was my advanced look at the Mighty Thor, the Black Galaxy Epic Collection. Are you picking these up in Epic Collection? Do you care about Thor? And if you've read these before, what did you think about the Tom DeFalco run compared to, you know, people that get a lot of recognition like Jason Aaron or Walter Simonson or JMS? Let me know in the comments down below because I love replying back to all of you that comment on these videos. Let me know if you're also a big fan of the Epic Collection. And let me know if you also want to see a Tom DeFalco Thor omnibus. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Near Mint Con. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be Near Mint.